Can you guys hear me? Hi. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Yo, 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 Nick. Olispati. How are you? Mordekainer, what's up, man? Sab, how about you? How you doing? What's cracking? So, oh, Zero is here. You guys haven't met Zero on this stream. What's up, Choo Choo? Let me just take a little hidden break. Oh, hello, little orange guy. I'm online and so is Zero. Per per per. Do you want to go back over there? Here. Oh boy, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's crazy. Ow. Ow. Oh God. What is wrong with you? He was hanging off my hoodie. So, not a lot of people in here yet. Um, but what I want to talk about today, you know, we were working on the art test. I actually decided that I wanted to kind of keep moving through the ranks. Uh, I decided I want a promotion. So I'm going to be a junior artist today. Um, and so, you know, as usual, I'm super excited to talk to you guys about your experiences um, when you were a junior artist. I'll talk a little bit about when I was. Um, and what we're actually going to do, the general thing we're going to do today is we're going to start reworking an asset. So there's a lot of possible things a, a junior artist might do. Let's not roll over the cat. Hmm, he's stalking right now. There's a lot of things a junior artist might do, right? I, and, you know, it's going to be different studio to studio, um, job to job, but it's really, really, really important uh, to kind of know, like, think about what, how you can be successful in that role. So we're gonna actually take this armor set that I built before, this here. This is actually a set that I've submitted to, to uh, to the game, it's actually been submitted for uh, for Dota 2. Did not get picked yet. And I think there's some things that that uh, could be jazzed up a little bit. So Kyle, who did the concept, he's gonna play the role of the art director um, and concept artist. And I'm gonna play the role of like, just get her done. Somebody else made this model and I'm gonna go back over it and take a little, take a little step through what might happen, right? So. Someone made a character, it's in the game, art director doesn't like it, character lead doesn't like it, someone doesn't like it, doesn't meet the requirements, isn't exciting enough. Um, and so I'm not actually gonna necessarily make a whole new character. Certainly as a first job, it's totally possible that you end up on cleanup duty. You end up on let's fix problems. Um, you know, when you, when you get deep into development of a game, it's pretty often that you don't really get choices uh, as, an, as a, a new guy, right? You're gonna end up working on other people's things, fixing bugs, and just generally making shit work. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a model that we've already got and we're going to figure out how to repurpose it. And we're gonna use ZBrush primarily um, today. I may try and sneak it into game, we'll see. Um, in fact, let me run Steam just to make sure that that's, that's downloaded, downloaded right now in the event we decide we're gonna try and do some prototyping in game. But really, this is sort of a, a backdrop for us to talk about it. <laughs> Retopo trees. <laughs> Retoppling trees doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun, especially if they're alpha cards. Oh boy. Oh boy. So, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the stuff that I did when I was a junior artist. We've talked about it a little bit actually already, so. I'm gonna dig a little bit deeper though, this time. Wow. 
So I showed you the other day. This is a perfect example of the kind of things that, that happen, right? I sadly did not, I went and looked for the source. I did not have the actual assets. This is actually something I did as a junior artist, right? Like, or effectively a junior artist. When I was hired full time and effectively, I was handed a bunch of models that were pretty crazy. And I made them a little bit more in line with the style of the game. Um, but these models were made. Someone else more senior to me had done them. And my job was just take the models, retexture them, do what you can to make them look better. And for what it's, you know, like, I think for the things that were good about it, there's still plenty of stuff that I would have done better. But these are the sort of tasks that you get handed where you can really do something great or you can just do what you're asked to do, right? And I think that's a really important part of this is understanding how you can be successful in the role you're given, right? If you're, if you're tasked with polishing someone else's work, um, the number one most important thing that you're gonna wanna figure out is why. Like, what is the reason that you've been assigned to fix those things, right? So in this con or this context, like, I know these were just very noisy. I mean, they're even still noisy, right? There's still crazy jpeg -y textures on them. It was worse before, but you can see the elements that I actually increased, you know, like the contrast on. Um, you can see where I painted. I got a little dodge in there. But for all it's, you know, for what it's worth, if someone had told me, hey, fix these, they're too noisy, I probably wouldn't use the same overlays, right? So I didn't do a great job of figuring out why I was doing what I was doing. And I think in general, if you if you think about that from the beginning, when you first start intern, junior artist, all the way to art director, why are you changing what you're changing? Oh man, you are gonna be in for a ride. It's gonna be so much better for you. What's up, Moonlight? What's up, Canyon? What's up, Nelouis? Nelouis? Ni Louise, how, how, any, any Louise? I don't know, name, shenanigans. So hold on. Um, so yeah, like really understanding why you're doing what you're doing. That's really, it's like tantamount to success. Honestly, when you figure that out and you do it right, you are gonna, you're gonna do big things. Um, but that curiosity of why uh, isn't necessarily something that you start with. And it isn't necessarily something that you can impart by just saying, hey, yeah, just ask why. It's like really wanting to know and understanding why. And I think all of what we're going to talk about today, I think, is in that zone. Why are you doing what you're doing? How can you make it better? What all those things kind of like start from one thing, and that's curiosity. Um, it's really important, like super important. Uh, so, you know, this model, actually for all intents and purposes, I think is really cool. It didn't get accepted. I can't talk to the artists that would choose it or not, but what I can do is sort of figure out why I think it might not have got in. And so we're gonna, we're gonna go do a little spelunking. Hey, what's up, Jake? How you doing? How are you? So, trying to find, I'm sorry, I was actually, I'm spelunking here. Turns out, uh, 
finding old images. Should have done this before. Um, yeah, so more junior art stuff that I did. Where? Huh, it's like not. Here, super amazing job that I had to do. Make a trim sheet for all the architecture in the market in D&D &D Online. Make a trim sheet. I don't know what that is. So starting from there, starting from make a trim sheet, figuring out what you need to be doing is super important, right? Figuring out who, why, what, what things are people gonna be looking for? Who's going, like, who are you actually servicing? Like, what, what do they need? All that stuff's super important. So, for me, when I look at this, I see a pretty cool model. And I think it's pretty, I think this is actually a pretty good model, but let's take a look at something real quick. Just gonna go, quick go look at all of the accepted sets for this character. See if there's overlap. See if there's uh, flourishes that I'm not doing that I could be doing, right? Like. These are all pretty cool, actually. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. Do I overlap with something else? Maybe we overlap a little bit here, right? A little dragon skull on the on the old the old weapon. Well, all in all, I feel like these are these are actually pretty tame. With characters in general in Dota, I feel like there's a lot a lot more like jazziness. Like everything is about that screenshot of it in game when you're in the store and you're looking at it. So we're going to we're going to we're going to play that card. We're going to work through that. So let's get this texture lit. I'm just going to start this up. So like I said, I think one of the most important things is to have curiosity about why you're doing what you're doing um, and ask the right questions. So in this case, if I know that my job here is to Excite with like the simple, the simple shot of it, right? Like I want to see a character this big. That glow goes a long way. So we'll try and make sure that we make that work. A couple other things that happen with this. Um, there's much higher poly count since I made it initially. So the helmet I can do much higher res. So I'll be able to get some of these crazy flicks with the uh, the uh, the hair. That'll be cool. Um, but really what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna have to figure out how do I take this other artist's stuff, in this case it's actually mine, but just imagine, play pretend. How do I take their stuff? How do I get a successful version of this that does what this concept is doing and make sure that um, I'm going to actually make something that they're gonna pick, right? Um, that's really my goal, is to make sure that I, I, get, I get it all in. I'm gonna take this boy right here. We're gonna hide everything um, in ZC Manage. We're gonna hide everything other than the helmet. Love when that happens. Okay, so shouldn't it be too hard for us to get to a point where some of these shapes are just right in there. But let's start with the quickest of all, which is gonna be reproportioning a little bit. We'll take all these mo these models. We'll do all low. Not the lowest model I've ever seen, right there. <laughs> What's up, Harry? What's up, Dev Deville? Came back from acupuncture. Oh, jeez, Jake. Needles, baby. Um, you know what we should do actually? Let's before we start this, let's actually take this. I'm gonna crop this because I don't need all of this. We talked about this before, but I like to uh, I like to crop with a little bit of space above and below, um, and I let that just fill my scene. So I'll crop like well, we can do actually probably like this. So when I do load image, it's going to actually give me. Um, 
the buffer from the top to the to where the actual action is. So I'm gonna be working in this area. I want that right in the middle. Use the image. Prop. What's up, Resners? All right. Yeah, I was uh, I was in Minnesota last week. Uh, some family stuff. So. Um, oh, we gotta flip this too. I don't know. Actually, I, I still don't know why this happens. I have to ro rotate my image, otherwise it comes in upside down. <laughs> Since I updated. All right, let's load that image in the back as. Friend. So you can use image size to change that stuff right here. There's an image size slider when you load it You can actually have it be a percentage, but I really like just cropping Preemptively so when it fills I don't I'm gonna have the same space for everything. I don't have to remember a number Simplicity is key bada -bing, bada -bing. Oh all right. Hello. <laughs> How you guys doing? Better than my ZBrush, I hope. One second. Always feels good. First thing first, you know, let's get this the crash out of the way. You know, just let ZBrush stretch his arms a little bit. We get in, get active. What's up, Specky Nation? So, you know, one of the things I can say, like, in general, um, a pro tip for you that's just, it, it, it will never, never, never be bad for you. Um, if you are trying to figure out why someone will want you to do something, um, asking the right questions and, and trying to figure it out, like really genuinely trying to figure out what they're asking you to do, um, including remembering that they're human too. And like, so with a technical thing, like making game art, it's very technical. It's constantly changing. There's always something new that you need to account for. And I can say almost categorically every studio I've worked at, there are a lot of people that just do what they've been told to do to make it work. Right that aren't trying to figure out the process, aren't trying to figure out what they're doing and why they're doing it. When you start thinking about it that way, when you start thinking about what the task is you've been given, you know, whether it's something like exporting to the game, how many clicks did it take and, and did they tell me to do something that seems a little strange, like, you know, pat your head, rub your belly at the same time before you hit export or it'll crash, try and figure out why. Make an effort to to pull apart that nest of, of crazy knots that generally will end up happening. Especially with shit that's not a well-documented internet, uh, internet documentation, right? When it's your own engine, when it's um, proprietary, like Sony will have their own engine sets like that. will have tools that have been made that are amazing, but often that tribal knowledge that passed on torch of, here's how you get something done, People aren't asking why they're doing each of the steps and figuring out what they're doing at those steps. They're just doing them. So when you're asked to do something, try and figure out what it is really you're doing. If you start doing that early, you'll be in a really, really awesome place. It's really hard to get through any amount of time in the game industry without it changing dramatically year to year. You know, I, I started and I only painted textures. So there was, there was no such thing as ZBrush. There was no such thing as sculpting. Um, when I started, I was doing pixel art and animating things frame to frame, painting pixels. Here's my animation, right? That is the only way you could make stuff. And then there were 3D models and then you were painting textures on top of them. The process has changed dramatically though. Start to finish, it's completely different.
And so knowing that, knowing that if you don't have curiosity and things are gonna change out like right underneath you, you know, if you're gonna be the slow one, you're gonna get left behind and you're not gonna really excel at anything. You'll probably do a pretty good job for a couple years at doing like the current current set of, of tasks, but eventually that's gonna catch up with you and you're, you're not gonna be the hotness. You wanna be the hotness. All right, so what we're gonna do, actually I'm gonna un unhide everything for a second. Or at least I'm gonna unhide the body. It's his hot body, he do what he want. So I'm not worried about a one-to-one -one on this, but I do want to use this for proportion changes in general. Oops. So what I'll do is just get one camera, start with that. pretty good. So I'm going to punch in my custom transform. That's actually from document. I actually moved that on my UI. Again, one of the most important things for me when it comes to this is constantly changing my UI. I put enable customize in the top right here and I, I put on uh, have to hide the UI over here. I put on store config. So when I change my UI and I do this daily, I'll drop buttons off, put them on, store it and save it. Um, really, really important for me to not be digging through menus. And when I catch myself digging through menus, put that shit on the UI. Um, but so yeah, so these buttons here are basically saving camera positions. So if I click it, it'll go back to that camera position. And those are from the Z app link camera position. So you can see the custom one is now orange. Okay. so. I'm going to do a hide of that body again. Select that. Hide that. What we'll do is, I'm going to just do a little T-Pose master on this guy. T-Pose that mesh. So I'm going to reproportion things from uh, from here. Yo, what's up, Kyle? How you doing, man? So I'm just going to push and pull. I'm going to use the move tool. I'm not going to use the move topological yet. So for some reason, move topological took over one of my slots. It's fine. So from this camera angle, I'm going to sort of say, all right, all right, Kyle, all right, art director, what did you want? You wanted some different shapes. Oh no. Let's do this. Just going to mask off. Oops. Hide all the bits I want. These boys ain't loyal. Alright, so I masked off everything once I isolated it. So now when I move, I'm only gonna be moving the helmet around. We're gonna pop back to this. Pop. We got a push and pull on. We don't need that axe, so let's hide that. Just giving me, giving me the business right now. Right, so we're gonna the side view, and I'm gonna sort of estimate, I'm gonna get rid of this little bumper here. Remember, all this stuff is gonna be, this is like, I just got an asset from somebody else. I, I'm gonna use what I can, and the stuff that I don't use, well, it is what it is. But our goal, like I said, is just to get in and make 
the asset that is going to make this successful. I'm gonna switch to move topological, which really just adds a topological auto masking to it, um, which is gonna let me kind of pull these plates around, but not totally disrupt everything in its zone. So anything that's a contiguous surface is gonna kind of get get wrapped. So we have to respect the original model. Respect the axe. <laughs> you wish I started from zero? I could. It wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. So part of part of learning this whole thing, Zamaka, is to kind of know um, when you work on a game, like right, like the most important thing is getting through it. The most important thing is like finishing, doing it as efficiently as possible. And in this case, definitely the most efficient thing is for me to work from where where the other model was made. I um, mean, this is really what you know. Honestly, it's what it's likely what you'll start doing. You won't start making a full character. We will start from, from scratch on some stuff. But not today, friend. So we're gonna reshape, uh, we're gonna reshape that, the jaw here. Basically this element here is gonna turn into our jaw. What's up, Jory? What's the joke? I don't, I don't get it. Was it actually a long time no see? Specky? <laughs> How you doing, Jory? Jory, were you in class with, uh, with, uh, with Danny? I feel like maybe. I don't remember. Danny, were you in class with Jory? It's a question for both of you. Wiener butt? Yeah. Were you guys in class together? I feel like you could have been. Both Jory and, and uh, Hodor. Daniel. I'm gonna be honest, it's like Marsiglama. What is it? Were you, were you in class with her? Okay, maybe not. Do you remember a squirrel man? An astronaut squirrel man? <laughs> More six salami, yeah, exactly. I nailed it. <laughs> uh Gregor, it's actually not uncommon. I mean, it's one of those things like you, um, it's unlikely that you'll start with just making a full character. Your first, first job, it's totally, it, honestly, that goes place to place. It's not gonna be the same everywhere. Sorry, I butchered your name, Dan. But yeah, so it ends up being the case that as a junior artist, like the thing is you just want to make it smooth. Like that's the best thing you can do is to find ways to fill in gaps. And this is one of those things. It might be this person left. 
you know, on a project that takes two years, two years to make, people come and go. I like that I pause, pause talking, and the song is talking about breast implants. That's legitimate. I wasn't trying to make fun of you. I was actually trying to help get there. You know what I'm saying? Not making fun. Oh no, I actually modeled this chick. This is definitely my model. This is theoretical. I, the point of the stream is just to show you guys what it could, what the job itself could look like. I don't want to glamorize it. I want you to actually know what types of tasks you might do. And then when it is cool, I want it to be cool. I mean, this job definitely is not for everybody. I have to say, like, Nane, are you, are you in here? I don't know if you. While you're working, you actually you do stream and stuff. I'm pretty sure Nane started strictly working over other people's stuff. <laughs> Gotta give a lot of foot massages. No, it's not. It's not that. Yeah, honestly, like the f the better you are at figuring out like how to put out a fire, the more valuable you are. Really, you know, like. It turns out, actually, my job is very outsourceable. It's very easy to outsource character art. It's one of the few things that you can say, here are the restrictions, here are the specifics, here's a concept, there's a turnaround. Send that shit to anywhere, doesn't matter. Um, but where my value is, is in making sure things get done the way they need to be done. We do it faster, we do it better, we make good choices. Now that's not something that you start doing, right? But it's choices. It's choices you make as you go that help you get there. For me, uh, I'm actually, you know, by nature, very curious and I'm pretty technical. Um, and so those things together ended up with me being somewhere in the middle of a bunch of different tasks. And I'm pretty OK at a lot of them, I'm not amazing at any of them. Right. There, there are plenty of people that are specialized that do one thing, but I'm valuable because I put out fires. And that is not a question. I will make sure that we make the coolest thing we can with the tools we have. And when we can't, I'll make a lot of noise about it. Um, when you start, you don't really have that in your head. It's not something that someone puts in your head in the first place, right? You don't say, hey, hey, new guy, I want you to figure things out. Because no one's actually asking you to do that. They're just asking you to make shit, generally speaking. But the sooner you figure out that what really you need to do is figure out what they really needed and find ways to make yourself uh, that person, that guy, that girl, whatever, you, you figure out those spaces that there are gaps in the production and there are gaps in in uh, how things are done. You'll become a very valuable asset and it is no question that that is a better place to be than the person that just does does the work, right? Like I said, this can, this can be outsourced. Easy, easy money. Send it out. Exactly, get yourself a man who's versatile. That's right, Eerie. Right, exactly. Get you a man that cooks and cleans and can build a fence. <laughs> In my case, does UVs and models and can scope some stuff and write some scripts. I can't build a fence. I gotta be honest with you. I'm not building a fence. <laughs> That'd just be a lie to tell you that. Azanku, that's not really what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm actually like, I'm not actually suggesting that you should be a master of all things. That's or even try to be that or even be a jack of all trades, like just do stuff. I'm saying figuring out how to fix things, how to make things better does not mean that you aren't doing the cool part. Yeah, pooping. God, I can't. Every time I read your name, I'm like, oh, <laughs> pooping out loud. Goodness gracious. Yes, it can.
I don't know, I don't think it's much different. When I when we talked about getting an internship, getting a job, whatever, it really isn't that different once you have a job. You just keep doing the same thing. You're hungry, you're interested, you're curious. And that's what makes you a valuable employee. Okay, so these are <laughs> so these horns are pretty crazy. Looking. I like it, I like it. Joy, are you working on a portfolio? Okay, okay, okay. How's that going? We're gonna simplify this horn down a little bit. Now this is all on the Tifo's mesh, so I've gotta transfer this back at some point. You wish it could go faster? Hey, you know what? That's the real story. That's the reason that I do stream. So people can see how how fast it is. It's not fast. This job takes a lot of time. It's super bomb when you actually get that job, but it turns out getting there that shit is hard. How many of you guys have actually been a junior artist? I've got your first job. Entry level, junior. Not necessarily, the title isn't necessarily important. Gary, I'm reworking it. This is, my assignment was fix this guy's art. We didn't like it, he quit. So it's not really, it's not really meant to be a, uh, a new asset at all. So this is a new painting. I'll show you the original. Let me just get that. Let me open that. <laughs> so here was, oh, that's not the, I'm honest, it's not where it's supposed to be. It really isn't there. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. But well, you get the idea. This was the original concept. And now I'm going back over it after I built it. It's actually, it's been submitted. Like the whole thing went into the game. You look at the, uh, wow, this is crazy. This folder, is this not where it's supposed to be? Turns out, it's 
not where it's supposed to be. There you can see I had it in Dota. Like the whole uh, whole set was in there. Here was the original final game model, I think. But it just didn't have enough pizzazz. So it's been made, and now we're going back over it and we're trying to figure out why we're doing it. Oh, thanks, Cube. Joy, what's your what's your folio? Let me see it. You do a uh, link. You do a uh, link. Yeah, Gary, exactly. It's fix this model. We want to do we we want to do it differently. It's not we don't think it's good enough. Um, it's gonna ship next month, and we want to update it before it happens. Pixa Joe. <laughs> A lot. Actually, I think that I, I legitimately think the original model was cool as hell. I like it. It's not jazzy. Okay. So the, my my playlist is slowly getting stronger. My my royalty free. Music playlist is getting stronger. I'm feeling less bad today than the last three. And that's all I can ask for. It's just turning a little less tragic. So strong. Music is so important to me. I, you guys don't even understand. I I couldn't imagine a world where I did work and and didn't have music on. Just that would not happen. Uh, I said, <laughs> did, I, did I slur that? I don't think so. Jory! Sorry, Dre. Jory. There's like an extra bit in there. Jory. Dre. I mean, it's pretty close. That's strange. I wouldn't have ever thought that. That's, that's pretty close. You should go by Dre. Jory. Huh? What about that? What about that, Jory? I still think your name is cool as hell. I've never heard of that name, never heard Jory before. It's good. So, this looks okay. This looks okay. George, George Ray, I don't know. <laughs> I would just call you Jorder. I wouldn't be able to say George Ray. So let's see. What's what do you got? What do you got? Who's this? What is this? What, is, what do you got going here? Looking pretty cool. Texture. The skin's a little. Come on. Give it a little little texture, a little life to it. Right now, it's very plasticky. Pretty damn good skull, lady. And a hossy. Okay. Definitely need game rest stuff. Definitely need to not put work in progress up. Okay. Oh yeah, you need more. You need more finished assets. Honestly, you need more finished assets. That's it. <laughs> Name Jury? I don't know. <laughs> I I knew a, a dude named Paul Jury. He was a tech artist, I think. I feel like Oh good. Gotcha Seabrush! <laughs> ah! 
Don't fail me now, quick save. Don't fail me now. Yeah, don't put whips in. No, no whips. an issue with ZBrush where UI just stops updating? Uh, no. That sounds awesome. Never seen that, if I'm honest with you. Oh no! Do you know what's bad? Uh oh. We need to go to quick save. We need... What's bad is that was that was depot's mesh. Shit. That's pretty lame. Did that crash before? No. No. Or right, we're gonna try and maneuver. I'm gonna try and maneuver you guys. First, I'm gonna save this. So you can save your your uh, your camera views if you actually punch them in. Uh, I was gonna save this in. All right, here's the move. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. Recover tool. I'm gonna pull some shenanigans. Oh wait. Oh, it was there. Let's just T-pose it back right now. We've, we've done enough. We've done enough. Let's do that. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Don't fail me now, ZBrush. Don't fail me now. Okay. Success. So let's ditch a couple things. We can get rid of some riffraff here. We're going to delete those bolts. We don't need those anymore. Oh, wait, we did need them. <laughs> Shit! Um, and then what we're going to do is actually we're going to take this guy right here. I'm just going to do one of these. Do this symmetrical extract. Do that smooth. I'm just going to dynamite that right now. Because I don't care. I'm a reckless man. You know? And we're gonna just taffy pull this into position. No rules. A quick, quick bit of poly paint here. Join me on the struggle bus today on the Pixelogic live stream. So this has to cover 
the OG model. We will do nothing. Living on the struggle bus, that's my life too. That's my real life. Struggle bus based. It's a bad to the fleet. So let's just do a quick. I'm gonna inflate this a little bit. Cause like I need a little bit of material here. Push and pull. Struggle bus. Oh, hey. Life on the Struggle Bus is on my new album. About to drop next week. About my job. <laughs> no, M Pickup is my brother. Matthew Pickup. Who I would say could qualify. You could qualify as my nemesis, couldn't you, Matt? <laughs> yeah, it definitely. You know, that's a good, I'll put that on my list. I should WD-40 that. <laughs> Don't talk to me. <laughs> it won't be me, it'll be somebody else. I don't really need to dox you on account of, well. I know everything. I'm not sure why I turned into Batman, but. Uh, Gary, I'll, I'll submit it when I finish it. Why did you get kicked in the nuts? Because it's your measure? What? What are you talking about? I don't know if you're being sarcastic or not, Gary. What are you, what are you saying, buddy? On my channel, I do a lot of stuff. Like, I mean, I, I do, this is what I do normally. Normally is I work on Dota stuff and Right now, I'm on the struggle bus, trying to make a mod for, or just learning Unreal 4, basically. Dicking around with the, the uh, SDK. Oh, hey, what's going on here? So 
somehow those are not symmetrical, so let's do... Whatever. Too much geometries. Com. We'll we'll split it and I'll just I'll dupe it and flip it over. What's up, Sunny? <laughs> You're a better artist. <laughs> Shots fired, little brother. Shots fired. I say little brother, but honestly, he's 30 years old and he's as tall as me, bigger than me. So whatever. So I'm gonna do a quick sketch over the top of this of some of the smaller details. The sporting editors had also given me three hundred dollars in cash, most of which was already spent on extremely dangerous <laughs> drugs. The trunk of the car I'm out of that. I'm Shut it down. Narcotics lab. We had two bags of grass, 75 pellets of mescaline, five sheets of high-powered blotter acid, a salt shaker half full of cocaine, and a whole galaxy of multi- This is like the shittiest, the actual shittiest quoting of that show I've ever heard. I gotta, gotta next it. What's up, R. Baxter? What's the OMG? What's going on, dude? You all right? Do we need to send some help? <laughs> Matt worked with Bounce. At one point, the galaxy far, far away. True, 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 Baxter. Uh, Brent, Matt, led you, Brent led you, B rent. Okay, my bad. I'm sorry. I didn't know that we were moving on to B rent. I'm gonna call you B team, B squad. Oh, you bench warmer, bench warmer, Brent, B dubs, the bench boy. Gotta get that water, H2O. H2O Liddell. All right, Red Roman, don't fall in. See you next time. Do you guys have any questions in general about what I'm doing about jobs at large? Getting them, having them. Keeping them. <laughs> Tips on making drapery, the best thing you can possibly do Trying to figure out how folds actually, like what they're, what they're trying to do, right? 
and drapery just generally speaking is observation of of sort of like where something's grabbed and where it's where gravity's taking taking the lead so if you think about it that way and you look at fabric and you look at how much strength the actual fabric has what brush i use um move the move tool I mean, you could do that stuff. Baxter, I think generally speaking though, I, I always suggest learning how and why, even if you use tools like that. Um, honestly, if you learn to sculpt folds and fabric, and then you decide you want to use Marvelous Designer and cloth or any of that shit, um, knowing why fabric looks the way it does on a pair of jeans, where it bunches, where it folds, where it crumples, um, the, the general the general rules that you would follow in your head will help you make a better version of that with Marvelous Designer, with end cloth, whatever. Um, it's pretty it's pretty uh it's pretty important to understand it. I mean it's just like people using Substance Painter or Quixel or any of the automated material stuff, not understanding why the material does what it does means that you'll never be able to problem solve when it doesn't give you the result you want. So, observe, pay attention, check out how it's, how gravity is affecting different types of fabrics. Really, fabric wants to be unfolded as much as it possibly can. Gravity doesn't, doesn't agree. And then your buckle, your stitches, your whatever also don't agree. And so it's doing its best to unfold itself. Brusha? <laughs> Pretty good. That's a good joke. I like that joke. You can only use it in the winter. Dumb. Dumb joke. I like it. I'm gonna just do this. We're gonna leave that boy behind over there. I want to hug this as close as I can to the face. Actually, we're going to need a couple pieces here. <laughs> okay. Got him. Squirt, it is a very good tool for uh, creating models. It's super fun. Working in an environment where most of the people can be antisocial. I don't know, that's a hard one. Cause I, I mean, the thing is like, that's a, that's like, that's a people thing, right? I gotta be honest. I, I used to make all my friends from the office. I'm a little gregarious though, so like I don't really like I'll go talk to people. Um, but I have to be honest, because of the transitive nature of like everybody's transient in fucking games. Everyone goes, everyone leaves. You make friends and you lose friends so fast because they're just going to the studio. They're moving across the country. And I don't know if I were you, I would spend my time uh, making buddies outside of the office. Especially if you you work in an environment where people aren't really excited to to kick it in the first place. That's just such a personal thing, right? Like some people just don't want to hang out. And it probably has nothing to do with you. Actually, I've met you, Hodor. I'm not sure that's true. You could be a little less of a dick. I'm just kidding. Hodor is one of the nicest guys ever.
<laughs> Boom roasted right there. Honestly, like, I mean, I know the people you work with. Most of those people are have been there for so long, and they've got their buddies. They've got their little worlds that they live in. Just, you know, honestly, it's one of those things. Like, in, in an environment like that, you just gotta be around long enough. Honestly, I don't think everyone that you work with is super antisocial. It's just that it's just that world of like, you know, being around. Maybe you have some barbecues or something. Invite some people over. I don't know, as a former instigator who has recently become mostly a, a basement troll right here. Um, it's it gets there's 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 a lot of work on on the side of, of building friendships, so it's not really game related necessarily, but Let's see, what do we got? Any other questions? Do you poly paint, uh, do you poly paint and poly paint or substance painter? Baxter, I use almost all um, substance painter. I do parts of it poly painted and I'll, it really depends on the project, right? For these horns, painting them in here, I probably could do. Um, and then just bake out the vertex color later. I do both. Primarily the substance painter is where I do most of the texture stuff. So the body's on a low subdivi subdivision level until you work on it. This particular model is an actual model from Dota. So this is the Axe character model. So that I'll never touch. All the other parts are going to be high poly. And they're individual elements. So that the helmet will be a piece. The shoulders will be a piece. The gauntlets. The skirt. The weapon. They're all their own texture. Uh, Foey. Or Fo13. Uh, have you ever had to deal with... A really vague art test. I've got one with no deadline, no concepts or style guides to work from. What if I'm poly count with vague, make a, make a tree. Well, what is the actual thing? I mean, let's talk about it. What's the actual, not vagaries. Tell me what they actually asked you to do. Um, we were talking about art tests before and I think the really important thing to know is, is why they're asking you to do it in the first place. Um, so it, it does take a little bit of your, you wrestling a little bit with the the how and the why you got that test. Pixel Rabbit, you've been watching streams. Are oh, you talking? Oh, you okay. What's your opinion on freelance? Like getting started, uh, and what portfolio is better for that purpose? Uh, so one, I'm not Pixel. I'm not Pixel. I'm so much monsters. This is me. That's me. Hi. Um, two, portfolio doesn't change to do freelance versus in-house jobs. It's still just making good shit and getting people to pay attention to your stuff. So really what matters is you have a, a good portfolio. That's it. Um, there's not one thing that's going to make you more or less, uh, more or less likely to get it apart from just being good. What's my opinion on freelance? I mean, I'm freelancing right now. What consulting? I don't know. Whatever you want to call it, consulting, freelancing, contracting. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, it's fun. It's fun to solve problems for people. That's what I'm doing. But when you're doing, just doing character stuff or whatever in the basement, like me, it does get a little. Uh, it's a little lonely. It's a little bit lonely. 
And eh, I'm kidding. But it is. It's actually it's such a different experience to work with other people. You learn so much more. So I would say having a goal of working full time is usually pretty legit. It's also really interesting to talk about, right? Like the, the fact that you working on your own, you can only do so much. You can only have so, so much leveling up, right? You'll figure stuff out and you'll make better choices and you'll make better art. But when you get to sit next to, you know, 10 or 12 people that do the exact same thing you do, have been doing it for longer than you, um, are very interested in doing the best thing possible, even if they aren't the guy that posts on, on ArtStation, they're gonna have so much knowledge for you, so much information that's just there, ready to be plucked from their little sweet brains. Um, you level up so much faster in a room than if you work by yourself. It's not a question. You get pushed by other people who are sitting next to you. You see somebody make some dope horn and you're like, that's a really cool way to do that horn. How did you do that? But I'd say like, that's one thing uh, I can't, I can't overstate when it comes to, when it comes to getting a job. Um, I think a lot of people have a misconception that they're working hard when, uh, when they're working on their portfolio. Like, I mean, I can say, honestly, if you are working on your own stuff, you don't have to do it full time. You're just not going to do it. There are rare exceptions. And when you do do it, you're not like really directly moving towards a goal. You don't have a, a, a deadline. You're just sort of making stuff. Right. And so with that in mind, it's such a different experience. And the change that you get when you actually have that job and you actually sit down and you have, you have to do, you know, eight hours of work in a day. Eight hours straight, like that's all you're doing. You don't have any excuses like, hey, my friend wants to play PUBG with me. Hey, I think I probably should play some Hearthstone. Hey, shit, um, I'm gonna go get some beers at lunch. You know, like that's that's my life right now where I don't really, like my time and when I use it um, is not maybe the most effective. And I can say that de having dealt with, you know, eight years of students working really hard, I know they're not, I know that's not true. I know what amounts to I'm working on this all day, every day. And when you do get that, when you do get that job and you have to do it eight hours a day, you'll be shocked the difference in the first month. Even you're just like, Oh, that's what, a, that's what 80 hours feels like. That's pretty cool. Well, edge icon, I mean, I'm just saying when I say get beers at lunch, that means I'm going to go sit on a patio and drink beers with friends. I have no intention of going back to work at all <laughs> anyway I th there's a huge 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 divide between what people think is working hard and what just doing the actual job is like making it your job this is a terrible song this is a truly terrible song let's let's go ahead and delete that from this list Jesus Well, I, it makes me sad. Like, I want to listen to good music and I can't. Royalty free shit. Man, you guys that, that hang out in my, in my stream. Twitch.tv slash so much monsters. No, that that's like my number one. It's like, let's get some jams. Let's, let's pop some jams off. You know what I'm saying? Love my music.
clarify. Thanks for that. I got a bunch of texts from my old job. Yeah, I quit. I quit a few months ago, Jory. I've just been doing my shit. <laughs> Our test is to make a unique treehouse with a minimum of four assets: the tree, the building, the ground, props. That's not very. That's not vague. That's pretty cool. So th basically that means that the job that they're gonna have you do is say like, they're not gonna give you a concept. They're gonna say, hey, we need a tree house. Hey, we need a dog house. Hey, let's build the front door. So that's the reason that you got that test is that they aren't going to give you a concept, I suspect. Or at the very least they want you to be able to work without it. And so that's the job. I mean, that's literally that's why it is what it is. That's interesting. So, I don't remember what your original question was when I asked you, Fo. What, what is, what was the original question? No, I asked specifics about the test, but... Last night was so bad. I was so frustrated. Um, I was I was trying to learn to mod Arc, and literally everything was like freezing the the editor. At the end of the night, I realized that it was like, oh, I just need to wait for five minutes for everything one time, basically. Oh my god, I was so mad. That was my desperation dance moves, by the way. Like there was a point where I was just like, well, this stream sucks. <laughs> like it's been like four hours of me trying to figure this out. And I'm making no progress. Anyway, I actually think it's really interesting, like going into that process again, like trying to learn to mod. It's been, it's like instantly my brain just like swells with like, oh, you remember that? Remember this? Remember doing that? And I love the feeling of just trying to figure it out. This is a, that's a great example. Yesterday was terrible. I made no progress on what I wanted to do. But I'm still curious, and I still want it, and I'm still hungry. I still want to make those mods. There are probably 15 more dance dance moves, just people copied or clipped all night last night, because I kept ending up doing it. Like, oh, crash, oh, it's locked up, oh, whatever. Jump Later cubed.
Um, Nicholson, M. Nicholson, doing... Probably one of the best things you could do is look for uh, companies that do outsourcing. So places like uh, Valkyrie and Liquid and Original Force and Laksha um, and look at their job postings. And if they don't have a posting, even just, you know, hitting up somebody that works there saying you're interested. I would say I would say that's my my general thing is like going from going from uh, the idea you have to have ID to get ID. Um, sometimes it's hard to get there, so I would just start at the, the source of places. I wouldn't expect that you're going to be able to just do it yourself. Omnom's another one. by a buddy and one of my my uh, game art idols when I was starting. But I think the best the best bet is to look for a company that does outsourcing. Figure that out. And there's tons. There's tons. Um, Laksha Digital, Liquid Development, uh, Omnom Workshop, Original Force, AIDA, um, Elkiri, uh, these are just ones that are popping in my head that I've actually used in some Super Genius. Um, I don't know if Three Point still does it. Uh, Airborne Studios. I'm trying to think of other ones. There's a lot of, I totally don't remember. There's a, I, I had a huge bunch of them when we were trying to figure out the outsourcing for Gigantic that gave bids, um, but yeah, I mean, just look for that. Yeah, no problem, man. Move to New Zealand. Okay, Baxter. Are you trying, you trying to get your hop a hole on? What's going on? I'm honest, I still get, I still get uh, people asking if we need outsourcing for Gigantic and I haven't worked on it for months, so I can go look in my LinkedIn for some of the less thoughtful and researchy companies. <laughs> my LinkedIn mail definitely has a lot of that, where it's just like, oh, I haven't worked there and I, I posted it on LinkedIn. I mean, I like, it says no longer working there. But I wouldn't advise those since they didn't do the basic level of research on the people that are trying to spam for work. Hobbit life kind of like thug life? I don't know. Could be.
Uh, itch icon, it depends on the company. It depends on the company. Um, I have worked at companies that have, usually it's a combination job. Like you probably won't just do that. Yeah, I mean, doing a combination, I think, is often what happens. It Usually it ends up being a, a joint thing between environment, environment art, and uh, and lighting from the companies I've worked at, anyway. That's generally been what's happened. But. So we're going to get a super sweet retapo, this very advanced technique that's called Damien Standard and Z Rematch. I don't really like using uh, the uh, retapo tool in general, I think it's just kind of clunky. But what I do like is that I can force feed shapes that I want to show up in the model just by getting a nice sharp edge. You know what I want to do first though? Make sure those are where I want them. You will do what I say, Gypsy! So this nice crease will get edge detected when we Z remesh. You will do this. You will give me geometry. My favorite brush, the move tool. That's my favorite brush.
I'll be right back. Let's take a break for a second. <laughs> God damn it! Today is the day. Uh, well, no way am I turning on quick save. I didn't lose any work. We're fine. It's just frustrating. it was snake cook that was responsible for that <laughs> it sucks it sucks <laughs> snake cook was jealous guys
I'll load up. Remember, I saved my view. So now I can pop it right back to Yayo. Yayo. All right, later, Joey. Hey, I streamed just for you, Joey. That was just for you. Tell Dave I say what's up. Maybe like a high five or something for him. You know what I mean? Will D. Will D indeed. Wait, do you know? Starfire, do you know Jory? Word, word, nice, I like that. Did you actually give him a high five or are you just winding me up right now? You lied to me. You didn't give a high five. That's stone cold.
One thing I really love is poly painting, blending colors as I go. Okay, there's emotion. Okay, there's emotion. Um, I like poly painting uh, because that blur, like softening everything like this, lets me get a new sample color, right? So, where in this case, I don't want it to be red through here. I want it to be brown, but I do want it to feel like it's hot. And so I'm gonna pick this new color that's slightly similar, and I'll go to the edge with that, and then I'm gonna rain it back. And what I'll do is I'll just keep kind of sampling back and forth, using it kind of as its own palette. This way I don't get raw color one way or the other. We get some cool human saturation changes. I love poly painting. I don't know if you guys have noticed. Like I poly paint early, I poly paint often, I re-poly paint things. Now C is the color pick, um, and then V flips it from primary to secondary color. No, you're all right. You're all right. See what I did there? All right, all right. Shit. And turn. One thing that bothers me, and it's the thing I consistently will do, and you guys will too, if you're poly painting, you're often going to turn off symmetry with the X key. It's one of those things that I mean to turn off just forever. I don't really ever want to turn symmetry on or off. When I do, I could use it as a button probably. It is a shortcut, doesn't really help me. Or super lami, I could. You just project it on if you want to. I like to I like to paint What was the question, Resonance? I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Hot key for color? No, I said it. Let's see. Or was there another question about hot keys? What am I missing? I'm trying to figure out. Character blockout lens, it really depends. What are you doing with it? Cause like for me, my blockouts tend to turn right into my model. What do you, what is it for? Are you asking like, if you're trying to get a, you're trying to tell someone how long it's gonna take you or are you trying to gauge whether or not you're slow? Toggle function on a, to use toggle function on a hotkey. I don't know, I'm not sure. It's Starfire's got it. Gauge your speed, okay. Um, 
All right, well then we need to talk more about it. We need, I need more information. So when you say, it's 30 minutes too long, uh, what level are you getting it to? Honestly, my block ends I spend hours on, but my block ends are usually like, here, I'll give you an example. This character, I'll show you his, his block in. I'll show you an image of it, honestly. Uh, let's see. Here's my block into this guy, right? Extracted parts. But this is a few hours of work, but it's things that I'm gonna just use. My block in is like very much on the track of going through it. Like working towards the final. You can see I just refine from there. I keep adding parts and like even these chains. Like I block I'm like constantly blocking things out. What was it like being in the industry when they transferred from all the hand painted textures to normals and spec? That was slightly insane. I would say it probably took a solid ten years of people in general practice using normal maps for the general population of artists to actually know what the fuck they were doing like what a normal map was um I, I have to say like it was totally insane I don't know I'm a pretty technical dude so my my brain was like I want to know why I want to know how how do I make this better what can I do to make this a cool cool asset but that wasn't what everybody did and that's what I was talking about earlier when we were talking about what it means and what's valuable to uh, to a company. It's not valuable to get a new guy that just does the thing that they've been told to do. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't do what you're told to do. What I'm saying is just doing what someone says and not trying to understand why they're saying it is not very valuable. That's a huge deal because like with normal maps like switching over, like that time was a great example of like, oh, Plenty of people could have been really awesome, could have been huge assets if they could dig a little deeper and figure out what they were doing. But most of the time what would happen is people would be like, oh, I understand this texture does lighting. Um, I'm going to paint it out. I'm going to just sit there and I'm going to go into Photoshop and fix all those errors. Rather than learning how to render it properly, why the things were happening that were happening, um, instead of solving the problems, they were doing, you know, sorcery that was like a whole bunch of steps of shit that really could have just been solved by understanding how to properly set the distance for ray casting, right? Like you're getting shitty black parts or inverted normals or shit like that. That kind of stuff happened for so long, so long. Like people just not understanding what the process actually is supposed to be. You, you're, you're rewarded a lot for figuring it. Like when someone says, oh, just paint that out. And you say, well, okay, maybe I should figure out why. You are gonna do a better job of making something great than the person that's just like, here's the thing I was told to do. I would argue that the difference is not quite the same. Going to PBR stuff, I feel like there's pretty well documented and clear paths to success. Like, as long as you follow these criteria, you will get there. You'll get the thing done. In fact, I think it's actually arguably easier to do, um, you know, metalness and and uh, and roughness than it is to do specularity and gloss. I mean, I still I know plenty of artists that I work with that still don't really understand what gloss and specularity are. And so I, I would say that that's a pretty comparable world. Um. Still, you can still kind of get that, the parity between spec and gloss and mentalness and roughness. Well, like all that stuff is like close enough. If you just imagine sculpting a model didn't exist, um, 
there was no such thing as ZBrush. There was no such thing as Mudbox. There was make a low poly model. The process was build a low poly model, finish it, make a great looking mesh, right? Take that great looking mesh and paint it after it's all done, right? There's no interaction between the, the texture and the modeling phase. You just you model it, then you texture it. Pretty much that's it. Um, and so you can be great at one and not so great at the other. And there's definitely like a world of difference between people that are good at one and not the other. But then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well also you need to have full understanding of sculpting and, and 3D forms. Nobody did a real sculpt right away. No one was doing uh, stuff fully in ZBrush or fully in Mudbox or fully in any of the other programs that could do similar stuff. No one was doing that. What we were doing was taking the low poly that we'd already made that was unwrapped and ready making a smooth version, a subdivided version of it, um, detailing it, adding folds and stuff, but you were hamstrung by the fact that technically you were using this low poly model that you were already done with, technically speaking. You weren't going back and forth between them. So it's a huge, huge workflow difference. And even just retopo, when retopo was like that, that change, night and day difference again, another huge shift. It's not like, it's not the same as spec and gloss and metal and roughness. Um, it's not the same, for sure, because those changes, those changes actually have some amount of, of parity, right? Things that totally flip the workflow on their heads happen multiple times in like the span of, you know, four or five years, where it's just like, holy shit, this isn't, there are a lot of people that got left behind that were just like, I can't do it. I'm not doing it. I'm done. That's it. I mean, you have to understand that like when I started, that was 15 or 16 years, like full time, like professionally 15 or 16 years ago, 15 or 16 years ago, there were people with careers that were 15 to 16 years long, right? That have been doing this one thing, but they had started doing pixel art, right? And so it's totally crazy. There were plenty of people that just, they were done. That was the end of their career. Not like it ended it. They were just like, okay, I'm going to move on. Do something else. Or they moved to management or something like that, right? Like you'll see a lot of portfolios that are just old, old, old stuff that are super dope. Well, pixel art to 3D, you can, if you, if you look at original, like, Look at the Doom models. They're a really great example. They aren't that different than the cells, than the actual pixels. Thing is, such a thing as ZBrush does exist. So I sometimes feel like there's no reasoning with people that defend the argument. People should know spec and gloss. While still giving advice, that you should always learn the new tools. Uh, I'm not Artivarius. I'm not really entirely sure what you're saying. So because people, you're saying people will say know how to do spec and gloss, but also learn new tools. I'm not sure how that connects to ZBrush. Actually, is the thing. Yeah, I wanna I wanna understand what you're saying, Artivarius.
Even top artists working in the industry for like 15 years saying that people nowadays jump straight into ZBrush and BPR. I think you mean PBR, but yeah, substance, right? And know nothing of what it was to make spec. No, okay. No, 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 no. Or it's a various. I think the the actual. It's totally possible that some people are saying some shit that's kind of ridiculous. But what is important, and it's not a question, is understanding what spec and gloss are doing. And that's not that is you you do not. There is no argument that that isn't important. Um, and what I will tell people is that it's really important that you know how to make the texture and how they're interacting to get the result you want. If you don't understand it and you're just there noodling dials and you're not trying to figure out why they're doing what they're doing, that is a fail. You're fucking up. That's super bad. But using the tools like shit, shit, howdy sunshine. The most important thing is that you do things quickly and you do the best thing that you can do at that time to get it done. One thing that's really frustrating as someone who tries to interact with a lot of people, um, like being at a lead level and saying, hey, this person doesn't know how spec works, how gloss works, why they're doing what they're doing, and they totally bone it up consistently. And you have to go and help them figure it out and be like, oh, change these values, do this, do that. And they don't really know exactly why to change what they do. They just kind of push buttons until it changes. And they're like, okay, is this better? So understanding why you're doing what you're doing, there is no question. Right, exactly. So Nane, Nane is totally right. At the end of the day, knowing how to use the tool and get deeper is the most important thing. When I teach people ZBrush, I don't show them all of the tools right away. I don't show them the auto magic tools, things that are gonna do your job for you. I show them how to properly do the thing manually so that they understand if it doesn't work, how to untie that knot. And so that's actually the thing that's important. It's figuring out why you're doing what you're doing and how you could make it better if it's not giving the result you want. Smart materials are a perfect example of like, if you don't know what you're doing, you can use the materials that other people make and put them on your model. Congratulations. Great job. Pat yourself in the back. You drug a node to the thing. But understanding what it's doing and how to tweak it and how to really make it yours, that's where you're actually being an artist. That's not thats not being a, a line cook, that's being a chef. You know what I mean? Don't be a line cook. I mean, the truth is that kind of, that kind of style that 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 process like going through and being like here's this automatic thing someone else made for me I can do this guess what I can outsource that I can I can send that to anyone to do it and so you're not valuable and and you know that's really what we we're talking about earlier is like making yourself invaluable in the process of making a game isn't necessarily being the best character artist in the world. It's trying to fix problems and trying to figure it out. <laughs> hey, name. We're talking about being a junior artist. How is that? How's that for you? You want to tell these people what your day to day started as? What was your first assignment? In the most vague way possible, describe it. On account of NDA and all that shit. Nane just got a job recently at Rockstar. Perfect candidate to talk about his experiences since they're current. Being invaluable means that you couldn't possibly fire that person. Being valuable is cool. Good job.
No, it's not synonymous. Invaluable is just like that. Like you are, you are an absolutely pivotal person to be on the team. You sculpted a head. Was it a head for a character that existed? Were you working over something else? What was that like? I was talking about earlier, like generally speaking, being a junior boy or girl means that you aren't necessarily doing the full character. You aren't necessarily going to get that hot new concept to start from zero. New, hot new concept. Wonder how many of you knows how fake is gaming? What do you mean, Abmon? There you go. So, perfect example. So, Nane, Nane reworked somebody else's work to level it up and it's exactly what I'm doing right now, right? I whoever made this model before was a total schlep. Failed. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding because it's my model, damn it. <laughs> the man who made this model was a man of wealth and taste, obviously. He's the total boss. Uh, Brothers, I I taught for the last seven years at at Future Poly. It's uh, sunset recently, so we have no more classes. But that was where I was teaching. Yeah, I just turned it back on. That's one skill that I, I suspect uh, not all of us have leveled up. I haven't leveled up. Is the... Is symmetry on? Question mark? I need more points in that skill. Baxter, I'm not sure what you mean. I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be very happy to put on some real grungy, grungy hip hop in a minute. So I think I'm gonna stream a little bit on my channel. Probably not working on this, I'm probably gonna go Dig back into the dinos and, and give the old college try one more time. We're gonna try and mod arc some more, so. Still plan to do that after stream. I'll just switch over. Like turning off this playlist is gonna make me happy. It's getting better though, right? Chat, if you've been in this this stream, the music is getting better, right? The royalty free, man. Hard. It's hard in the streets. You were supposed to start, Nane. Supposed to start doing new, new stuff? What happened?
What do you define a person that is great as modeling? Uh, what do they have? Like, what would they have though? Oh, you're sick. I'm sorry, dude. We'll feel better, dude. Uh, I, I, I actually don't know. Are you asking just like what, like when I look at someone, they're, they're saying they're a modeler. What, what do I look for? Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, generally speaking, when I'm hiring somebody to do character modeling, the thing that I look for is finished assets first. I want to see the finished assets. I don't give a shit about your ZBrush model. I'll be honest with you. Don't care. Uh, because there are plenty of people that will make a bomb ass ZBrush model. They'll give you great renders from Keyshot, whatever, whatever. Looks awesome. They still have, you know, 40% of the job left to do. And when I see the game art, that is like the end of the line, right? You had only one thing you had to do with that model, which was make a cool model. And then when you get to the game asset, there are plenty of opportunities for you to fuck it up. Your materials, your low poly, your render, your uh, your texture work. Did you use some shitty Photoshop overlay that messes up all the normal information, right? Like, there's so many, there's such a wide world of places for you to screw up that the end result is, that's the thing to look at. Saint C, nah, man, I, I do, I do my stream, I do my, my, uh, so I have my own stream, I'll, I'll give you a link real quick, but I, I taught for seven, seven or eight years in a classroom, and I've kind of switched over to this, I like this better, this format's more fun for me, because I get to do what I want, I get to answer questions from you guys, and I get to, you know, kind of interact more, but not under the guise of uh, a class environment. I don't really, I'm not, I'm not, thri I don't thrive on that anymore. I used to. Uh, no, alt Samper, but I, or I do. But my website is so much monsters.com. Yeah, you know, Artsy Bear, somebody asked me, I, someone emailed me recently and I totally forgot that I had that thread going before I went to Minnesota, um, asking to do mentorships, but honestly, I'm told, I give feedback freely in my stream if anyone ever posts shit. Sapphire, no, I require that I play music and so I'm playing music that's royalty free. So it won't get dinged on YouTube. I require it though. I gotta have something. When I stream normally, I just I just play whatever. I don't really care about rights management. Cause my uh, my mod my vods are usually usually muted because of it. But But yeah, I prefer Artivarius, like in general, I, I like I like giving feedback and I give feedback whenever anyone asks when I'm streaming on my channel. Um, but I'm trying not to give myself too many projects at one time, so I would consider doing mentorships. Someone did ask me recently and I, I, I was I was trying to figure out what that would mean. Um, and they sent me a response telling me what they thought it should be, but <laughs> Name what you've learned so far is it making games is hard? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it makes a good point. Like, getting to the finished model is 50% of the work. It's not really quite. There'll be a world where once you get to the point of finishing shit that the integration is not so hard. But certainly when you've never done that before, oh my god. And especially when you have weird process you have to go through, especially doing builds and shit like that. The stuff that they don't tell you about. The stuff you don't have a choice but to learn. You have to cram that in your brain somewhere. All right, later, Kenyon. Sure, Artavarius, that's fair. <laughs> you learn to probably drink beers and get weird. All right, all right, that's a good, that's a good. But I guess that's the thing. I think for me, like I try, I try my best to like, like one of my favorite things is teaching. I like not a question. I love it. I love seeing people go from kind of like doe eyed, bushy tailed, trying to figure shit out to, oh no, you got this, you got this. And I love that feeling. So it's definitely not the case that, that uh, that's lost on me, but it's, it's definitely, it's harder to kind of put, uh, more time constraints on time that I don't really even spend well anyway. I guess that's my that's my that's my deal. But I really, 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 really love helping people figure this out. And I, you know, I think the truth is, I think I have one of the coolest jobs that I could have: uh, making characters for video games, making monsters, doing just shit like seeing something come from a piece of paper and turn it into this cool thing that I'm fighting in a video game. That I love to play, right? Like that's a fucking cool job. That's really cool, and it's really hard. Uh, apart from me, just like trying to just share exactly what it looks like with people, it's really hard to see. Um, what the hell are you yelling about? I don't know. I feel like there's a lot. There's a lot of education that that does things wrong. That does things. That's all about the flashiness of it. It's not flashy. It's actually not flashy at all. This job is long. It's a lot of work. It's tiring, it's frustrating. You have nights like last night where I'm trying to fucking figure out how to use Unreal 4 and shit just doesn't work. And I don't know why, I'm because I'm totally green there too, right? Like showing that and showing the human part of it where it's, you know, this shit is tough, it's tough to do. Um, I think that's the best service that I can give is like to kind of have those moments of being vulnerable and being like, well, we'll figure this out eventually. And eventually you'll get to see me do cool shit. But for now, mm, oh, this song again. Nope. Let's delete this off the playlist. Uh, what if you were doe-eyed and bushy-eyebrowed? That's fair. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> Be you. Be you, Hodor. <laughs> Didn't you do that twice where you just sort of accidentally? <laughs> Didn't you? Dude, wasn't the wasn't there another one where you like accidentally really called you out like, hey, you makes it looks like you made this guy. You made like the what's his name? Um, Madman guy. Or was that supposed to look like him? Nah, dude, you don't you don't know shit to me. You busted your ass and you made cool shit. You guys should go look at Nain stuff. He's fucking awesome. And he worked his ass off and he got a sweet job. Sight unseen. They didn't actually even bring him in. They just gave him a job. That's not me, that's that's you working your ass off, dude.
<laughs> yeah, he's cute. Doesn't he have doesn't he have uh, Jimmy Kimmel on his back? Can you see it? Wait, you posted your, your thing, right? Can you actually see it? Wait, what? Art station? Art station? Come on. Name. Art station is not a place. You joker. Is it? Can I see it in here? I'm excited if it is there. Zoomed in. Too close. It's too real. Where was it? Oh, right here. God damn it. Joe. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel alive. No one's gonna know. No one's ever gonna know. Too subtle. You gotta you gotta pop that out. Could give it a little business, a little extra. Nane, be more extra, okay? Be a little more extra. We got about 30 minutes left. Do you guys have any questions? Art, I, I, I know there's a lot of people that come and go in here. So, any of the rest of you guys? Um, have you got you a junior or early position? Any stories about any any? Uh, what'd you work on? What'd you guys do? You know? For me, I spent. I was a. I was an intern, and I got hired a few weeks after. Like I had like a eight week internship or something like that, but a few weeks after they, they had me full time and my job was not what I signed up for. It was environments. We talked about this before actually. Environments, I did props, I did weapons, I did faces for NPCs, I made random creatures, I made random effects. But all the shit, all the shit in general that I did was finding, they're, they're trying to find a place for me, right? Like find the right place to do stuff. You think it's better to shoot for indie game jobs or just try a straight. I don't think they're different. Art Hagon or Artagon? They're not different. Honestly, you just need to have a good portfolio. You need to make a portfolio that's cool, that you would hire. And if you can say, I would hire that guy, it doesn't matter if you're indie or, I mean, I honestly, it's funny. I think from what you said, it, it sounds like there's a clear stack ranking to you of like AAA studio or indie games. And really the thing is, thoughtful people who are creative and great at what they do, are the people that everyone wants to hire, right? Like I get, I get poked about all manner of things, right? Anywhere from Blizzard to like tiny little indie studio who's like, maybe you would want to do this cool thing that we're doing. And the answer is, yeah, I want to do all those things. I think that's it's not the case that they're they're divergent. Um, being a good employee and being creative and making good shit is pervasive like you do that everywhere edge icon when you were a junior you did everything modeling texturing animation lighting and rendering out of place that wound up laying off the entire studio for free and turns through the same work oh rough that's a bummer yeah i think Nate's right. You should you should try and like build a portfolio for the thing that you want to do and know that you may not end up doing that exact thing. But if you're 
you have clarity of purpose and you know what you want to be doing, just keep making shit that goes towards that. But I don't think it's the case that indie development and AAA games are actually at all different as far as choices that you should make and, and quality that you should shoot for. So, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I just think there's like, a, there's a lot of weirdness with that divide to me. I don't, I don't understand it. get told to sort of pipeline for a set of customizable avatars which would have swappable parts and clothes while sharing one rig and animation set oh and make all the characters it was a lot to deal with straight out of uni uh then onto indie mobile titles or mobile games from characters props yeah so yeah that's a totally different thing right so m nicholson ended up building like working on a pipeline as his first job the truth is you know, we're going to go through all these different different days and I'm going to talk about different jobs and what my experiences were. Seriously? <laughs> it's a wind up. Come on. Uh, it's good. Auto save got me. It's going to get me. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Nothing is fucked here. Haunted pool. <laughs> Toto was a, a janitor at a haunted pool. Nice. Sab. One second. So Sab is going for more modeling character stuff. When you have a bunch of experience doing the whole pipeline, more than willing to continue doing that work. But should I be putting it in my portfolio or leave only my modeling work in the portfolio and let the resume speak for my other skills? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know, Sab. I'm not sure. I, I, it depends. Is the stuff that you would do um, the uh, the pipeline stuff? Does it actually look good? Because really, it should be only a question of what looks the best. You want to show the best things you can, and that's it. You gotta, you gotta learn to self-edit and bring it down to just like what is going to impress people, and anything that's not that needs to be cut out. <laughs> you need an adult. I'm sorry, hire a gun. Technically, I'm an adult, so I could help you. But I probably just, I think I probably would just swear at you to help it's like desensitize you I don't know what the what a spoopy urinal is but it doesn't sound very good uh okra any tips on sculpting elf ears not a lot different than sculpting anything else I feel like that's like pretty like what are the things you're having trouble with? Maybe I can help you with that. It's like that's a pretty open-ended question. You're you're basically asking me how to sculpt star. And I would like to help you, but uh I also would like it to not be just let me make an elf here for you to show you what it looks like. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me.
Oh wow, that's crazy low poly. You know if you start counting verts that you're you're really so here's the real secret that that uh no one tells you until later your poly count you know your tests with the poly count restrictions and shit like that. Really the thing that you're actually working towards is is a vertex count. Oh 120 I was like Jesus every polygon's four <laughs> So when you're counting verts the numbers are dramatically lower uh, because that actually also counts your UVs and anytime you split your model, you anytime you smooth your model, hard and soft edges, that actually is breaking that vertex in or that, that edge it'll break apart. So if you had two faces, that would have been one, two, three, four, five, six verts, right? And you split it here, it's now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if there's a UV break, that's also a vert. So vert count is a different, different, uh, different count that is actually what probably really matters more. And then if you're really feeling nasty, the truth is at this point, that's not even all that important usually. It's like for really low, low specs, that's not all that big of a deal. Material, material counts, like how many draw calls do you blow on a character or a model? That's what really is. So like your your budgets for art tests and stuff like that, for those of you that don't actually work in games yet, are actually budgets that, you know, like they're helpful, but they're not the day you get a a, a uh, report on perf and someone starts yelling at you about draw calls or vert counts, you'll be like, what the fuck? What is this? Hoder's, Hoder's suggestion is pretty good. Spend a little time with reference. Start there. But my elf year really isn't that crazy different than a human ear. And really the one thing you can you can say is that if you if you're making a character that's humanoid, um spend more time spend more time thinking about how to make it feel comfortable to you. Right when you're stylizing something or you're making a uh, alien race or something like that. Don't just try and make it weird Because the second it's bipedal You're on your own. You're, people are gonna compare it to a human and so you got to be really in touch with your star player To start improvising on that form and if you aren't in touch with that star player Don't do it Instead use that good human reference So that when people see it they don't start from hmm. That's not right. Because whether or not people, whether or not people can actually tell you exactly what's wrong with your anatomy, you're so hardwired to see. Uh, it's you're so wired to see humans and understand when someone has strange proportions. Your brain goes, "Oh, that's strange." Um, you can't get away with it. So if it's if it's a bipedal, you want to use that human reference. Generally speaking. The Dean, I don't really do challenges, honestly. I, uh... I take my time getting through projects that I do on stream, and... Between, like, having a bunch of projects that I spin up on stream, and... Consulting, it's like too much.
Any of you guys doing that challenge? Raw knowledge. Goodness. What kind of stuff do I do for that thing you do for money? I don't, that didn't understand the question, Nain. What are you saying? Try again, mostly English. Doesn't have to be, it can be for English. I'm okay with that. to ask if I can talk about it or not. I don't I don't actually know if I can. I'm I I've, I've been consulting for a some big nerd company and I don't actually know if I can say that I'm working for them because I'm not a full-time employee. I'm doing a really weird thing. But basically I'm doing sort of a combination of like clean up and technical art direction and art direction and helping make choices. Some character stuff. It's a pretty weird set of tasks, but it's fun. But I've been working for the last month or two doing that stuff. Which is why I haven't been streaming so much. Even though I don't technically have a job, day job. That's what I've been doing. Where would you learn ZBrush? Well, I, you know, the best, the best learning possible can be done by getting your hands dirty. In fact, the most important thing, I think with learning in general, it's not even ZBrush, it's anything, is, uh, it's not about a tutorial, it's not about any particular person teaching you. It's about understanding what it's supposed to be doing, being curious, poking around, and then when you get to blocks, have questions that are like, that are real questions. Like, here's the thing I'm stuck on. There's, there's nothing more valuable than that real time, hey, I messed up, I need to fix this. Can I ask someone, like ask someone who's streaming ZBrush if they know how to fix it. Post on the YouTube video, do stuff like that. And uh, fix your mistakes, right? Like the best possible thing you can do is fail. Well, that sounds weird, but it's true most important thing is to fail yourself don't don't let someone tell you a story about how this then one thing was really hard for them it was really hard to render normals i had a, such a difficult time doing it um that doesn't matter actually that's not important what someone else's failures are what's important is that you had a hard time rendering normals and you had a lot of questions and then you one by one you unpack those and you figure out why you failed and then you do it less But it's hands-on time, I think. Pain lethal. That's the best learning you can possibly do.
Oh, sorry. Um, I'm using primarily Trim9. I don't use H Polish, or I haven't used it today at all. I, I've only been using Trim Dynamic. Mostly Trim Dynamic, the Move Tool, Move Topological, uh, well, Damien Standard Action. Can I tell you guys a secret? It's kind of embarrassing. I, uh, I normally don't use Damien Standard, but since I updated to 4R8, I didn't have Orb Cracks installed. That's a true statement. <laughs> How sad is that? I just haven't brought the brush over. <laughs> Stupid Joe. Dummy. You, you don't use Orb Cracks. You know what? I don't use you. You're done, Snitchless. I mean, I don't care. I actually legitimately don't care who uses what brush at all. How long have I had symmetry off? That's my question. I just don't like the pinch, honestly. That's the problem. I just don't. I'm not a big fan of the pinch. The brush mod kind of like. Now the, well, give me a center actually, it's just a center brush with the brush mod on, so it, pinch, it actually pinches. If you change the displacement, you'll see it. Progress!
Starting to get that, get that, get that money. Don't make my own brushes. I really don't. I actually don't. I will say blends. I primarily I use uh um I primarily use the tools that are on screen. So move, Damien Standard, clay build up, or cracks. Um I use a little bit of clay sometimes depending on what I'm doing. I use the paintbrush. Move topo trim. I really there's a few things that I'll I'll customize on a brush while I'm working with it, but I don't usually use anything special, anything too fancy. That's the beauty of it, is that you don't have to be fancy about it. There's no secret to, to building form, right? It's like, just build it. Make it look nice. Make the lighting feel right. Make the shapes read. I think with some exceptions, you can pretty much get anywhere with any one brush, is what I would say. With some exceptions. Okay, well, I said with some exceptions, and that's specifically what I was thinking. Is like, could I do it with it? No, I could not. There's no brush. There's no. There's no grooming brush model. In an orc fight. Well, that's good. This axe is definitely an orc. I mean, he's based off of of uh, Warcraft three model. But it's a this is a character for Dota two, so it's it's based off a of Warcraft three model, which is very much the orc you're thinking of. It's a Warcraft orc, which is actually a Warhammer orc. So, yeah. If you didn't get an orc vibe, I'd be pretty worried.
let's do one quick pass over stuff that we're going to just get that's just going to be deleted completely out of this these boys these boys are done um these jaw boys are gone you know what i just realized i could have fully just taken this model and put it up there um let's see Or like general maintenance of this model to make it kind of like cleaned up. Here you go. Oh, well, we might be able to use some of that. We might be able to get away with a little bit of that. Oh goodness. All right, you guys, it's four o'clock. That's my stream. You guys have any other, any other questions before I run? Um, I'm gonna switch over to my my channel uh, after I take a quick, uh, quick break. I might just switch over and then take the break when I start. Um, you guys have any questions? You know, you can find me. Get at me. Uh, Twitch.tv slash so much monsters. Easy mode. There. So I'll be over there soon. I don't see any other questions come through. Uh, so. Unclear as to whether or not next week we're going to keep working on this or if I'm going to work on it in between now and then. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so be back and doing more oh Pam Letho you know I could put it up I don't it's just the stuff that I use so what's my snapchat I don't have a snapchat I don't understand snapchat I legitimately don't understand it <laughs> all right well uh thanks for hanging out you guys uh you know I'm so much monsters and I'm out of here. Bye.